Hey guys, it's Dan. Welcome back to the Headwaters channel. Today we're out at Whiskey Town Lake and I'm joined by my partner, Seth. He came all the way down from Portland and brought a couple of really cool performance sit on tops to play in. I had a couple of my own sit on tops and we decided it would be fun to get four 14 foot kind of performance-esque sit on top kayaks out, review them all, compare them all. They're all very different as far as price goes, as far as design but they all kind of fill a similar place in the market. So we thought it'd be fun to get them out, compare them, and bring you guys along for the adventure. First off, we've got the Swell Scupper 14. We just did a review on this a few weeks ago on the channel. If you want more information, go check that out. Then we have Seth's personal boat, which is an old Wilderness Systems Tarpon 140. Not a whole lot has changed on this boat, just a new upgraded seat from what we have here, but the overall performance should be the same. Next up, we have the Caribbean 14 frame seat. This is a nice all around performance boat that we've had on the channel a bunch. And then on the far end, we've got the brand new, at least to me, Stellar S14S G2. This is the most high performance sit on top that I've ever had on the channel. I love the, the uh, Pepto-Bismo pink. Due to the kayak shortage, this was the only one I could get my hands on, but whatever, I'm comfortable enough in that. And I really, really like the way that one looked. So you couldn't get more different, but they're all 14 foot. And if you're looking at performance sit on tops, this should be a pretty good starting place to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Price wise, you got the cheapest option here at $12.49 for the Swell Scupper Pro. The Tarpon 140 comes in at $12.89. The Caribbean 14 comes in at $19.49. Stellar S14S tips the scales at $32.95 for the Advantage layup, which is their fiberglass model. There is several models available in that, but uh, as you get into the carbon and some other things, you're looking at close to 4,000, 4,200, somewhere in that neighborhood. All the stats and all the details you're gonna wanna know, the nitty gritties are all in the link in the description below. So go there if you want to break down and kind of compare the stats. So we have a lot of different design characteristics here. And one of the big ones is how low the swell sits and the stellar sits. The idea is if you can get the paddler as low as you can in the boat, you can get a little narrower boat, a little sleeker boat, a little tighter paddler station, and a little bit better ergonomics by having those feet all the way low. Now, the disadvantage of that is if water comes over the deck, it has to have a way to drain out. And the footwells on both these boats are lower than the water line of the kayak. So what that means, you have to have a system that drains the water out automatically. Versus the Caribbean and the Tarpon, where the scuppers are up high enough where the water line is below the scuppers, so it's always gonna be a nice dry ride. So advantages here is drier ride, but you get a little wider, potentially a little slower boat. Advantages to the low footwells, better ergonomics, better stability for how narrow it is, and definitely better performance. So I thought about how I wanted to start the review and I decided to start with the least expensive, work my way to the most expensive, and I'm just gonna bring you guys along and tell you my thoughts on each boat as we go. My first battle in the Swell Scupper 14. Seth just picked this up a couple weeks ago. He did the review on it. I'm excited to finally get my hands in one. I paddled an early prototype years ago, um, but I'm excited to get in the latest version. I was checking it out. You know, it's 14 feet, 25, I think 25 and a half inches wide. So pretty narrow. I love the tight tucked in paddler station here. It's kind of reminds me of my surf ski or my stellar where I can get a nice high angle stroke. I'm only using a 215 paddle and I feel like I can easily reach the water. Cruises. This thing edges like a sea kayak. Like you just put that thing on its edge and you can feel it. And to some that might feel like unstable, but really it's just performance. It's just a, an initial stability and a secondary stability. You can feel it rock and then firm up. You want the kayak to be able to lean to turn. When a boat's this long and has this much keel, you want to be able to put on its edge, drive through your feet and get that boat to carve a turn as opposed to just being locked in. And if a boat's real flat, it doesn't really want to do that too much. So it also helps waves roll under the hull. If a boat's all flat, then it gets lofted around with waves like this. Whereas if a boat has a rounded hull or like this one has a pontoon and like two pontoons on the side, the waves want to come underneath the boat and the boat rolls with the waves a lot nicer. Which we might find out here in a minute. The wind's building up. We're getting a little more chop on the water. Wow, this thing has really nice glide. Feels like it's a chance to get up and go. It's a lot of water line. It's 14 feet, but it's all water line, which means it's piercing the water right at the bow and extending it all the way to the stern. Not a whole lot of rocker in this boat. So when I want to get it to come around, I definitely need to give it a few good sweeps. It also helps if I'm driving through my foot as I sweep. What that does is it helps us engage that secondary edge, putting the boat on its edge and causing it to turn.
All right, so we hopped out of the swell and I'm a fan. That's a very cool kayak. I've always loved scuppers and I'm a fan of the redesign. Very neutral in the wind. The only gripe I would say, and it's totally not a gripe for me, but if you wanna be completely dry while kayaking, that is not a dry ride. You're gonna get a little wet and that's fine. If it's summertime, I'd be happy to be in shorts or right now it's cold, windy, you know, it could potentially rain. I've got dry pants on, I'm totally comfortable. But the performance benefit and the ergonomics of the swell is totally worth it in my opinion. Next up, I'm gonna jump in the Tarpon 140, which is probably the most well-known quintessential fast sit on top uh, fishing kayak ever made. I'm excited to paddle it. I've been in this a few times. I've always been a fan of it, but it's a very different design characteristic. It's gonna be more stable. It's gonna be more bulbous. And I'm expecting it's probably gonna be a little slower. So the tarpon is 14 foot, 28 inches wide, has an overall capacity of 375, so a little bit higher, and a weight of 68 pounds. It's actually the heaviest boat we have here today. Out of the two rotor molded, they say this one is about four pounds more. You know, but relatively when we moved them, it felt about the same. One thing I love about the Wilderness Systems kayaks is their seating. They've always done a fantastic job making very comfortable seats, very adjustable. So I'm expecting the ergonomics on this one to feel really nice. So I can still straddle this one. It still feels narrow enough and round in enough sides that I could get in here. Definitely easily work with the fish. And when I'm in the kayak, you are you're way more on top on this kayak. You are not as tucked in and tight and snug, which some people might like. You know, if you want to be like this and you want to do stuff or you're, I want to have a fish in your lap and undoing the hook, this is going to give you a little bit more real estate to work, but that's going to come at a price of performance. It's going to be uh, a little bit, a little bit less connected, a little less one, which I'm sure some of you out there like a Tarpon 140, less performance. I know so many people think that this is like a super high performance, at least in the fishing world, compared to you know the big chair boats out there, like a, a big rig or uh, like a lure or something like that. This is obviously a lot higher performance than that. But compared to our other lineup, the secondary stability is even better on this one. Again, you sit up higher, so it kind of has to be. It doesn't really feel like it wants to lean on an edge, like it wants to be paddled a little more flat. Definitely more effort to get it up and going. That's crazy to paddle those two boats back to back and feel that difference. So as well just had to get up and go, you know, like a few paddle strokes and they wanted to go. This one feels, I mean, I'm up to speed. It feels like we're cruising. More of like we're trudging along now. Like hiking boots versus running shoes kind of a vibe. Like this is like, I've got my a big hiking boots on and I'm gonna go plod around for a, for a day of paddling. I think I'm noticing as I backrest it, I wonder if it's, it's probably adjustable height wise. It feels like it's a little high on my back compared to the other one. Like in a performance boat, I tend to do a lot more rotating. So as I'm paddling, I'm not pulling with my arms. You'll see I push with the top hand and the power comes from the rotation of my core. Planting all the way up at my toes, axing in at my hips. It's that first third of my stroke where I'm getting all the power. So from my feet to my knees, is the power portion of my stroke. From my knees to my hips, uh, sort of into my stroke, and the exit is at my hips. I'm not pulling way back here. You'll see a lot of folks doing this, putting it at their knees and pulling way back. Anything past your hips is basically a wasted effort. Now with that, when I'm rotating, I'm noticing that backrest on this being a little high and kind of chafing my back. I kind of would like to get it a little lower if possible. There's an adjustment for that. That's one thing I love about Wilderness Systems on all their boats. You want it differently? There's an adjustment. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, cool. Tighten that up. Now it's hitting the small of my back. That's really uh, where I like my seat to be. It's not about lounging around when you're in a kayak like this. If you're performance paddling, you want to be low and kind of connected to the boat. So we got a good stiff wind. A cross breeze just like I had in that swell. We'll see what the tarpon does if I stop paddling. It also tracks pretty good. It's not wanting to turn up wind. A lot of kayaks without a rudder will kind of start to turn into the wind. You really have to kind of fight to keep it on course. I would say for a bigger person or somebody that's maybe a, more of a beginner, this thing feels way more stable. Like it feels really, really stable. Again, if you're 275, uh, this is gonna be 
250, 275, this is going to be a lot more forgiving than the, uh, than the swell. So I think that would be kind of my recommendation if you're looking at these two boats. I think if you're a leaner, uh, 200 pound lender, the swell definitely has a better glide, better performance. If you're a little bigger, or if you wanted to do more fishing and you want more room to move around, the tarpon definitely has um, more stability. It's a drier ride. It's a great little kayak. So much drier ride. If we look down on the cockpit here, let me just tilt that camera down for you. When I say drier, as I move forward, it gets a little water in there. But all in all, it, it drains really well. You're not having a ton of water sitting in the cockpit. You don't have to deal with the scupper, or venturis, or anything like that. Pretty dang dry. So really the big difference in the tarpon is just how stable this thing is. You know, I don't hesitate to swing my feet. If I needed to get something out of my tackle box, I wouldn't really have to think too much about it. Um, I can lean on that secondary stability. In fact, you, you see people doing this, this when they're fishing. It's a very stable boat. Um, not that you would stand up in it, but just to give you kind of a, a point of reference, it doesn't really have a standing platform, but it's pretty darn stable. All right, I think I'm gonna hop in that Caribbean 14, which should, should be pretty similar. The stats, the Caribbean 14 is actually my widest boat, same length. The big difference is this one's only 50 pounds. So while we're here in the tarpon, we should really talk about seats. You know, the industry kind of went to frame seats on everything a few years ago, and I really do feel like there's still a place for these kind of seats. This is a seat that really connects you to the boat, this and the swell. Um, this one has a ton of adjustments, which I talked a little bit about while I'm out there. I actually came back in and Seth schooled me on a few things. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about the phase three seat. If I wanted more thigh support underneath my thighs, there's an adjustment for that. I can simply pull up on this strap and add more thigh support underneath to get better ergonomics in the boat. A lot of times that's simply done with a pan of a seat. If it has a nice pan, it has support. If it's got a flat chair, it's a flat chair. So that's kind of cool that you can adjust that. Out there, I was saying how I felt like the backrest was kind of high for where I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be more on my lower back. There's an adjustment for that too. You pull this, that brings the seat down. So a ton of adjustment on the phase three seat. One of the cool things about wilderness system kayaks. This isn't even the most updated model. I'm sure the new one's even fancier and smoother and all the things, but definitely a fan of these seats. You don't have to have a frame chair in order to be comfortable. In fact, the most comfortable boat I've sat in so far was that swell. I mean, this seat was nice and the ergonomics were good, but I found the ergonomics on this one with the low foot braces and the seat that sort of wrapped around and hugged my lower back. I found that swell to be really comfortable actually. So now that I talked down about frame seats, here we are at the Caribbean 14 FS, which stands for frame seat. Historically, the Caribbean series used to have clip-in seats. They were very comfortable, but they did move around a lot. And if you didn't have an adjusted right, they could kind of slide out. And the feedback that we got over the years from customers is like, why don't you just have a frame chair that I don't really have to worry about adjusting? It's very supportive, high back. It's got great ergonomics where your butt's elevated up compared to your foot. And they did it. In 2021, they came out with the Caribbean 14 frame seat and that's what we have here to play with and it's got a few different adjustments mostly just bringing the back forward and backwards and then it clips into the boat with four little clips and everyone's favorite selling feature is now i've got a beach chair if i need one the other thing about a frame seat is it gets your butt up out of the water if you don't want your butt to be wet a frame seat's going to keep you up out of the water high and dry so let's take it for a paddle and then we'll compare the whole boat to the uh the tarpon and the swell here all right so the caribbean 14 fs First thing I notice is a little wider. I'm noticing that I'm actually at the end of the foot pedal. So I'm 6'2", 34 inch inseam, and I've got the foot pedals pushed all the way out. My cockpit feels a little bit more open and roomy compared to uh, the swell for sure. And the tarpon even a little bit had that console. This one feels very open. The seat, you know, feels supportive. It's hitting me right in the, the small of my back. It doesn't feel as supportive under the thighs, but it feels good. The ergonomics feel good. Definitely feels like I'm sitting up on a kayak as opposed to the swell where I was down in a kayak. Also feel like my uh, my 215 paddle feels short. I need to get like a 230 in this boat, but we'll make, we'll make it work. Wow, it scoots. A few paddle strokes and it feels like it just zips right on. Kind of doing the same little loop as I had in the tarpon and I immediately feel the acceleration speed is quicker in this boat. Now it doesn't feel necessarily faster at the top end, but it just feels like it gets there, it gets there easier with less effort. Compared to the lead of the swell, it's already piling up and pushing a little bit more water off the bow. 
Wow. So I'm kind of tilting it to that secondary stability as I start to turn. And it is huge. It's only an inch wider than that tarpon, but it feels significantly more stable. It feels like it's just all primary stability. Like when you put it on the secondary, it's this big buoyant edge. It's like, nope, you're not going over any further. Whereas that swell wanted to like rock and roll under me. This thing is solid. When you're looking at stats, 30 inches wide doesn't feel that, doesn't feel that wide. But the nature of that gull wing hole design that Eddie Line uses, it's this deep keel and these big buoyant edges. All this volume that runs along the edge of the boat that gives it nice stability, nice uh, kind of fights back as you lean into it. Glad it's not just flat calm. Sometimes when I do these reviews, we just have flat calm conditions. And a boat handles differently when you're in the wind. Like right now, I stop paddling and I can just feel the boat getting caught by the wind and getting pushed. Sitting up higher, having more uh, elevation of the sides of the boat, it keeps you dry but it also gets caught more by the wind. And you, you definitely feel that in the Caribbean, whereas I didn't feel it near as much in the swell um, or even in the tarpon. It has good tracking there. The turning radius is a little slow to come around. 14 foot and it has an awful lot of keel. So that makes sense that it'd be a little slower to turn. You don't have as much secondary edge to lean the boat on to get it to carve a turn like you do on the swell. But the speed versus stability, versus lightweight, I can see why so many people love this boat. Like, I can put a brand new beginner first time paddler in this boat at 30 inches wide and they're gonna feel stable. They're gonna put the paddle in the water. It feels like it glides and moves well. And then they're gonna lift it on their car and feel like, you know, I could do this. This is not that hard. Whereas, you know, with a 65 pound poly boat, that might be a little bit more of a challenge. I'm gonna do a little stand up and uh, see how this boat does. I mean, I feel like it's gonna be easy to stand up in. Handy little paddle clip handles. That was a smart design. Just pops right in there. Solid, secured. Oh yeah. Now the tarpon I could stand in, but it wasn't comfortable. My feet were so close together. This is actually comfortable enough where I could stand and fish out of it and feel comfortable. I wouldn't be like overly stressed about tipping over and uh, comfortable enough where I could do it for a little bit. I wouldn't want to stand all day. This is not a sight casting boat, but it is stable enough to do it. Again, the overall ergonomics, I feel like I'm lifted up in the boat. It feels a little higher. So when I was in the wind, it definitely felt like it caught more wind. But when I'm just sitting here in the calm water, it feels very, very comfortable. It's like, this is a boat I could be in all day. The frame chair, I know I kind of griped about it, but this particular one hits me just right in lower back. Some people, you know, everyone's body's different. One thing I would suggest is getting a life jacket that's nice and high. If you're gonna get a frame chair, or a high back seat, get a life jacket that's either nice and high or very thin in the back. Um, or if you just, if it doesn't hit you right, there is like a lot of inflatable lumbar supports that are out there, uh, office chair supports. I've seen guys use those uh, to support your lower back. So sit in the kayak, but just know that you do have some options to help dial in your comfort. And the longer you spend in the kayak, the more you're gonna notice like mm, little aches and pains. So there's, there's things you can do to, uh, to dial yourself in. You know, out of the bunch, I feel like this is the most kind of sit on top, most towards the, the wide stable lawn chair fishing style. Um, you know, the industry is kind of pushing that way. And this is the most kind of modern version of that. So maybe the lowest performance in some ways, but uh, definitely probably the biggest crowd pleaser as far as if you're looking at the meat of the market, entry level paddlers that want something stable, easy to paddle, easy to use on and off the water. I think Eddie Line's really uh, got a home run on this one. But I'm excited to get in the Stellar next because that's gonna even be lighter weight yet. In fact, over 15 pounds lighter, 14 foot long, it's all the way down to 24 and a half inches wide. So it should be uh, quite a bit faster, totally different concept. So I have a lot of people saying like, I like the lightweight of the Caribbean 14, but I want something that's higher performance. What's out there? That's out there. The next boat we're gonna paddle is the Stellar S14 SG2. And I'm really excited to have this boat in the lineup because you don't hear a whole lot about real high performance boats like this. I think it's like $1,300 more than the Caribbean 14 FS we just demoed. So it's definitely on the high end of things and definitely on the high end of performance. But as far as Stellar goes, this is actually their most recreational kayak. It's got things like the foot pedals as opposed to a foot plate like you'd find on a traditional surf ski. It's 24 and a half inches wide, which again, most of their boats are 19, 18 inches wide, built specifically for racing, specifically for speed. So this one is geared more towards a recreational paddler that wants lightweight and that wants high performance. 
So it's definitely one that we should have in our lineup and one that I'm excited to share with you guys today. Before we launch, we're gonna talk a little bit about the rudder because this is the only boat today we have that has a rudder. 34 pounds, did I mention how light this thing is? That's crazy. And this is their heaviest option. This is their fiberglass layup. So this boat has an understern rudder on it, but it can also be fitted with an overstern rudder. That's an option that you can choose. The understern rudder under the boat gives a ton of maneuverability and control. The overstern rudder is nice because if you hit something, that rudder is gonna kick up and you're not gonna worry about breaking anything. So we've been talking seats on all the different boats. This is obviously the most sparse seat of the bunch. This is just a simple backrest there to just give you a little bit of support. But all the support of the seat comes from the contour of the bucket. So it's got a fairly wide bucket with a ton of support underneath your thighs and then a lower heel position. So your, your heels are lower than your butt, just like on the swell. Um, this is just kind of a tip of the hat to comfort. Most people that paddle surf skis don't even use a backrest at all. So there we go. And honestly, it's, uh, it's not too, too bad. It's not super, super comfortable, but there we go. If I tighten up that back band and get myself a little bit of lower back support, it hits me, hits me right in the low back. There you go, that feels better. One thing I noticed about the Smart Track rudder on this one being on the outside is it kind of hits me on the outside of the legs, whereas some of the other ones didn't do that. Um, I don't know if that would be annoying if I was if I wasn't wearing pants, I think that might get a little chafy. But we'll see. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Yeah, this thing's ridiculous. You put the paddle in the water and it goes so significantly faster than the other boats we tried. We're talking like those other boats are pickup trucks, and this is a sports car for sure. Stability, it feels really stable. It actually feels Maybe even a little more stable than the uh, than the swell. One of the things about it is the widest part of the boat is right here at your hips. It's called a Swede form, which means the front of the boat is pinched tight and the back of the boat is a little wider. So it's kind of like a diamond where the widest part is at your hips. So you get a pretty good stability. It's almost the same width as that swell, but a lot longer, cleaner entry. <laughs> Now this is the kind of boat that I get in and it's like, okay, I want to go do 10 miles today. So, so nice. You guys, this is why I wanted to do this review because so often boats like the Tarpon or the Caribbean get a lot of credit because they are for the meat of the market. This kayak is kind of a niche, but honestly, if I was in the market of buying a kayak, this is the one I would buy. I would buy something like this or maybe even the 16 foot version because it just flat out moves. It makes kayaking, feel effortless, it makes it feel fast, it makes it feel like, how would I, I would compare it to bicycles, like on an inexpensive all around mountain bike, maybe you go out and you do a five, six mile ride and that's good. But if you get on a road bike, you can go do 50 miles and it feels really good. And that's kind of the same deal with this guy. It's just a whole different level of speed and vision. You can really drive through the lakes on this boat too. The uh, foot pedals are designed. It feels like you can just push the power into the boat. Ergonomics feel real similar to that swell. You know, your fit low, your feet are a little bit lower than your butt. Let's do some uh, maneuvering and see how it turns. 14 foot, so it should turn pretty well. Oh, yeah. That understern rudders. It's almost not a fair comparison because the other boats don't have a rudder. But this boat, because it's got an understern, I can't really test it without the rudder but it makes it really maneuverable. Easy to come around with just a stroke. It just doesn't feel like as much of a sail movement. It feels, you know, you're a lot more connected to it. A little bit blown sideways, but not that at all. Compared to the swell, it has a better primary, maybe a little bit lighter on the secondary, but the primary stability actually feels better than the scupper. Um, now obviously not as much as the Tarpon or the Eddy line, but uh, I would give this probably the third place stability. More stable than I would expect for a uh, 24 and a half inch wide boat, my goodness. You, go. <laughs> you know what we were talking about under stern rudder? 
Oh, that's where they're not good. You just have to be aware of it. It is so much more maneuverable and so much better in downwind conditions, but man, it sticks under the water. They do make a weed rudder, which is shorter um, for the rivers and stuff. You can get a weed rudder with like a little rudder guard. But if you're in shallow waters, kick up rudders are a good way to go. Somebody who's just a recreational first timer is probably not gonna buy this boat. But somebody who's kayaked before and wants something that's a little faster, um, a little bit more performance oriented, this is a great option. Okay, so I purposely wanted to get some water in the cockpit to show you how the Venturi works. These Venturis work really, really well, just the nature of the way their, um, the hydrodynamics work, it sucks the water right out. So I purposely lowered this down. You can see the water flooding in there a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and just paddle off. Look at that, getting a nice cockpit full of water. Paddle off, and usually the boat needs to get to about three and a half, four miles an hour, and you'll start to notice it's gurgling. It's got two positions. This is like surf. If I was going through the surf and I really needed to drain it quick, pop it all the way. You know, just a few seconds and there it goes. And then if I wanted to stop and eat a sandwich, drink, get a bit of water, I can just close it off again. And as long as I'm not taking waves over, that'll work just like that. I just thought it'd be worth pointing out what the kayak looks like when I get out of it. Water in the butt, water in the feet. If you want to be dry, this isn't the kind of kayak you should be looking at. You should be looking at something more recreational, like the Tarpon or the Caribbean 14. But if you want something that is performance and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of dryness, the speed, the glide, the feel of this thing is on a whole different level than these other boats. Most people could get in an S14, be able to be successful their first day out and really take advantage of the ease of paddling. And then at the end of the day, the biggest thing is this. It's just 34 pounds to get on your car is pretty incredible. So that wraps up our on-water demo. After paddling these four boats, I can say they're all completely different and for completely different users, but they all have a neat place in the market. And it's neat to see some performance kayaks coming back to the market with the new swell. I think that's a great boat for somebody that wants a you know, kick around offshore boat, somebody that wants to go fast, cover miles. Maybe you're doing scuba diving, free diving, offshore fishing, and you, you want to paddle. I think that's a great boat for that. The next boat was the Tarpon 140. I think that is a jack of all trades, best value. If somebody's getting into the sport and they want a stable kayak, uh, it's a boat you can put virtually anybody in and they're gonna go out and think kayaking's fun and easy. The next up was the Eddie Line Caribbean. And this was actually the most recreational kayak of the bunch. It felt extremely stable, super comfortable, just sort of a, a beach chair that was easy to paddle. But when you pair it up to these other boats, it definitely felt more on the recreational side of things. The Stellar was fast it was capable it felt like it wanted a tour i really i had a smile on my face the whole time i was in that but i do realize that i'm probably in the minority i'm probably the niche as always you guys you can't take my word for it you need to demo these things for yourself i realize you may not have the ability to demo all these different kayaks but you probably would find a local kayak shop or a local community of people that are out paddling and that are willing to let you try some boats so get in boats try a bunch try as many as you can and kind of decide for yourself what works for you we really hope these videos at least serve as a window into what's available to you. And uh, if you have any further questions that I haven't answered, leave those down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We look forward to having you along on the journey. And until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.